Welcome to News Now. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. Our guest today is Kelly Brotsman. She's the managing director of the Prison Books Program. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you. So since 1972, the Prison Book Program has been dedicated to support people in prison by providing them with free high quality books and print resources. How did you get involved? I got involved because um, over the last couple of years, the organization Prison Book Program has transitioned from being an all volunteer collective to hiring a, a small staff and um, being run by a, a, an eight member board of directors. And so when they were looking for um, a managing director, I um, immediately um, seized the opportunity to apply. I had done uh, my prior career was in higher education, and I had taught classes in prison and had done volunteer work um, supporting incarcerated students who were trying to get their bachelor's degree while they were incarcerated. And um, it just became clear to me, you know, um, the extent of the prison state in this country and just um, the, the conditions inside. And so I've become just increasingly passionate about um, doing something about the prison system in this country and being involved in in humanizing um, people in prison who are pretty invisible to most of us most of the time. Um, and so this job offered a great opportunity to do that. Yes, and now you are inviting our community for an exhibit at the Belmont Media Center. And this is the opening day is this coming Friday, February 10th from 10 to 9. Can you tell us more about the exhibit and the name of it? Yeah, so the exhibit is called Art from Inside and it consists of about 27 pieces of, um, it's a selection of pieces of artwork that have been sent to us over our 50 year history as usually a thank you um, gesture for a shipment of books that we sent to an individual. Um, People create artwork um, of all kinds in prison. And a lot of times they want to express their thanks um, for our desire to fulfill their, you know, to honor their reading interests and fulfill their requests. And one of the ways that they have of doing that is to send us either, you know, an artwork or a piece of poetry that they have created. And so over the years, we've collected all these different artworks and they sort of lived in boxes and no one really did anything with them. And so when I came on board, I knew that we would be approaching our 50th anniversary year, which was last year, 2022. And so to commemorate our 50 years, um, I wanted to um, curate some of those works into a show and um, get them professionally framed so that we get these pieces professionally framed so that we could um, show them to the public. And so um, we have done that. We've um, exhibited it in um, four locations so far, and we're excited to bring it to the Belmont Media Center. Um, the pieces are on view now. And you have a little bit of history on the prison. Can you tell us about them, the, the painters, the artists? Yeah, so in each case, we received permission from the person who created the piece to put it on view. Um, and they all have different stories. So there's um, there are 21 artists represented in the show. They come from all over. They come from different states. Some of them are incarcerated in federal prisons. Um, some, uh, sent us their work long ago. And so they may have since been released, um, but if we can still find them and if we uh, know where they are, we are letting them know that you know their work is on view and is part of the show and was chosen to be included in this show. Um, so we have pieces um, of all kinds, about half of them I would say are explicitly book themed. So they depict books and the role that books play in an incarcerated person's life. And the rest are just, you know, like any other kind of artwork um, out of the person's creative imagination. So they depict, you know, 
family members, they depict um, fantastical objects, all kinds of things. Most of them are on paper, although we do have one piece that's uh, on a textile, um, a bed sheet. <laughs> and um, most of them involve very humble instruments. So the kinds of, of artistic instruments that are most available to people in prison, which is a ballpoint pen um, and pencil. And those two objects are usually fairly cheap to be purchased through commissary and or are supplied by the prison. So ballpoint pen is especially prevalent as an artistic medium in prison. And it's just amazing the level of technique that some people have developed with um, blue and black and, and sometimes red ballpoint pens. Sometimes people do have access to a wider array of, of artistic materials. And you can tell that the that facility probably had an art room or an art program or something like that. So we have one painting and several pieces that um, have um, colored pencil and markers and so on. Um, but many, many of them are, are ballpoint pen and pencil. If people would like to donate, uh, how can they do it? So prison book program is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. So um, all donations to prison book program are fully tax deductible. Um, they can donate money by going to our website, prisonbookprogram.org and clicking on the donate link at the top of the page. They can also donate books. Um, we are always in need of um, good condition books for um, our library. Um, and we take walk-in uh, book donations anytime we have a volunteer session going. Our volunteer calendar is also on our website. Just go to volunteer and you'll see all the different dates that we meet. It's usually four times a week. Um, if you, people have a large donation and they need to um, have it picked up, they can't make their way to Quincy to our location, we can usually arrange um, one of our volunteers to pick it up. So. Um, books and money are two of the things that people can donate and anyone can volunteer. You can sign up on our website, you can donate your time. And um, we strongly encourage um, people to come to our volunteer sessions. It's very moving and powerful work to be involved in directly. And um, we can have up to 30 people at each session. So we encourage people to sign up if they're interested in learning more. And you said you offer it to the 50 states and Puerto Rico and one. Yep. We serve at least a few prison and jail facilities in all 50 states. Um, and in some states we serve every facility. Um, and when we do get requests from Puerto Rico and Guam, we fulfill those as well. So um, anyone can write to us from any um, carceral facility in any state. Kelly, what a beautiful work you're doing with the with the people in, in prison. Can you tell us more on the importance of a book for them? Yeah, so um, books are one of the best ways to spend time in prison. Um, one of the things that a lot of people don't know is that um, formal education programs in prison are pretty limited to the completion of a high school credential. So if you already have um, your high school diploma or a GED, um, prison has very little to offer you in terms of edu formal education. So books, especially nonfiction, are a great way for people to learn concrete skills that they can either apply while they're incarcerated or that can help them upon release, secure employment, or just gain life skills. Um, we get a lot of requests for nonfiction um, how-to books, trade skill books, plumbing, carpentry, welding, that sort of thing. We get a lot of requests for books about recovery from trauma and from abuse and addiction and so on. And so those kinds of skill books are great ways for people in prison to self-educate. Um, and the other thing that people tell us, and this is depicted in a lot of the pieces in the show, is that books represent freedom at least temporary or mental freedom for people, especially fiction. So people who write to us asking for fiction tell us that when they get lost in a really wonderful plot or an exciting you know, story, or they start to relate to one of the characters in a book that they're reading, that they 
um, feel ev even if just briefly um, a, a little bit of freedom and they can forget that they are in prison. And so that in both of those ways, I think helping people educate themselves and also um, giving them a moment of sort of amusement or entertainment or serenity um, in a pretty harsh environment. Books represent freedom for a lot of people. And if there's a theme to this show, it probably is that tie between books and freedom. Thank you. Art will be at the Belmont Media Center until the end of February. That was it for today. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. See you next time.